Welcome to hand tool identification. So starting off with personal protective equipment, these are safety glasses. They're OSHA approved. These are the only safety glasses that are approved to use inside the construction lab. Here is what ear protection looks like. Leather gloves. Remember, gloves are only to be used when we're handling rough lumber. Here's a dust mask. It provides mouth and nose protection against airborne particles. Measuring tools. Here's a 25 foot tape measure. Here's a framing square. It's a large square used in building construction. It measures 90 degrees and can also be used to lay out stairs and house rafters. A caliper is a device used to measure the dimensions of an object. A tri-square is a woodworking tool used for marking and measuring a square piece of wood. It's used to mark wood and check for 90 degree angles. It has a handle and a blade with measurements on it. Here's a combination square. It's used to lay out and check both 45 and 90 degree angles. Here's a speed square. It combines common functions of the combination square, tri-square, and framing square all into one. Here's a bubble level, or simply a level. It is an instrument designed to indicate whether a surface is horizontal or vertical. This can be done through the bubble that you see in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, making sure the bubble is between the two lines. Here's a chalk line. It's a tool used to mark long straight lines on relatively flat surfaces. Hammers. Here's a rubber mallet. They're used in construction to force tight fitting parts together without leaving marks. Also used with chisels to prevent damage to the chisel. Here's a wooden mallet. They're usually used in carpentry to knock wooden pieces together or to drive dowels or chisels. Framing hammers are used in framing wooden houses. They're heavy duty rip hammers with a straight claw. The biggest difference between framing hammers and other types of hammers are their weight. The ball peen hammer was used to use in striking and shaping metal materials. The claw hammer, it's used to drive nails or pull nails out of wood. The claw determines the leverage you have when pulling out a nail. Safety rules for hammers. Use a claw hammer for pulling nails. Do not strike a hardened steel surface with a claw hammer. Do not strike one hammer against another hammer and do not use a hammer as a wedge or a pry bar. Cutting tools. So here's a retractable utility knife and a retractable knife or a craft knife. They're both ideal for cutting out intricate and detailed shapes due to, to the thin blades. They can also be used to cut out small materials accurately without causing damage. Make sure you notice that on the craft knife, there is a safety lock that is on the handle. Rip cut saws. They're used for cutting with the grain of the wood. The blades are pitched between 85 to 90 degrees, and this type of saw is specially designed to make what is called a rip cut. Notice the saw blades and the teeth on the blade. Crosscut saw. The crosscut saw has teeth that is specially designed to cut horizontally through the wood. All western saws cut on the push stroke, meaning that when you push into the wood, that's how it's cutting. Also notice the teeth of this blade. The crosscut saw has more teeth. Back saws. Saws that have smaller teeth. The length is shorter than typical saws, and they have a metal backing rib to stabilize the blade. Coping saw. They're used to cut curves and precise cuts. The blade is very thin and will break under tension, meaning that if you push left or right on that blade, it will snap, making only for straight or curved cuts. Dovetail saw. They're used to cut curves and precise cuts. This fine tooth pattern also works well with cross-cutting operations. Safety rules for saws. Do not carry the saw by the blade. 
Do not use any saw that has a dull saw blade and keep control of the saw by releasing downward pressure at the end of each stroke. Shaping tools. A punch pin is used to finish to punch finish nails below the surface of the wood. Wood chisels are used to shape or remove wood. Always keep your hands behind the sharp edge. The coal chisel is used for metal. Safety rules for chisels. Always clamp your wood down. Use only chisels that are sharp. Do not use chisels with a mushroomed head. Use only hammers that are designed for use with chisels. For us, we're only going to be using our rubber and wooden mallets. Keep your hands clear of the blade. The wood should be secure enough for you to not have to hold it. Use a clamp or vise if necessary. Chisels require two hands to use safely, even if one hand is striking with a mallet. Chisel strokes should always go away from the body and place your dominant hand on the handle with the other hand guide stabilizing the blade. Hold the tool firmly to prevent slipping. An awl is used to scratch lines into wood as well as mark the center of a hole that needs to be drilled. The wood rasp is used to remove wood quickly. It should always be used with the handle covering the tang or the end. The hand plane is a tool used to shave the edge and the face of a board to make it smooth, square, and level. Notice the differences type of hand planes for the use on the face or the use on the edge. Safety rules for hand planers and rasps. Work is to be securely fastened in a clamp or vise before planing. Always plane or rasp away from you and never put your dominant hand on the work being shaved. When handling sharp tools, always point the sharp end down. Bits and drivers. Titanium drill bit are great for general purpose drilling in a production environment because they drill quickly. Spade bits are for wood, plywood, and some plastics and cut a hole quickly with surprising precision. Router bits is a catch-all term used to indicate bits that create joints and grooves and profiles. These bits will make the shapes that you see on the left-hand side of the screen. Masonry drill bits are used for drilling concrete. Forstner bits are best are a best bit for drilling through holes, so you're making a hole larger. Hole saws, referred to as hole cutters or hole drill bits, are drill attachments designed to per cut perfectly round holes in a variety of materials, everything from metal to wood. Driver bits come in a large variety of sizes and sh shapes, such as Phillips, flat, star, and square, and apply torque to screws. They are for use with bit drivers or drills. The bit extender extends the reach of your drill bit. There are four basic sizes of screwdrivers, ranging from number zero to number four. Number zero is the smallest. This is an example of a Phillips head number three screwdriver. Notice the Phillips head has a cross on the handle. The flat head screwdriver Notice the minus sign on the handle. This is an example of a number three flathead screwdriver. Here's a number two Phillips head screwdriver. Notice the size difference. They're a little bit smaller than the number three. And then here's a number two flathead screwdriver. So longer, skinnier handles and finer tips. Here's a nut driver. It's used for driving nuts and bolts uh, just like a screwdriver. So safety rules for screwdrivers. Always ensure the screwdriver fits the head of the screw. Do not hold the workpiece against your body while using the screwdriver. Do not use a screwdriver as a punch, chisel, pry bar, or nail puller. Only use it for its intended purpose. Never hold work in the palm of your hand while using a screwdriver. Pliers. Needle nose pliers are both cutting and holding pliers. 
Notice the cutting end is closer to the handle. Linesman pliers are used for electrical trade to cut, straighten, and bend wire, and also to twist wires together when making splices. Diagonal cutting pliers are used for cutting wire and small pins in areas that cannot be reached by larger cutting tools. The channel lock pliers. These pliers are adjustable with tooth grooves along the upper handle. This allows their lower jaw to get locked into a variety of positions. The jaws are angled, which makes them useful for turning bolts and nuts. C-clamp vice grip pliers. They're useful for a wide range of woodworking and metalworking applications. Notice that they also adjust and can lock into position. Clamps. Bench vise is used to hold wood in place. While working on it, it must be used properly so it does not damage the wood or jaws of your product or project. You can see that we have scrap wood on the inside of this bench vise to prevent damage to our project. The bar clamp is used for gluing up wood from edge to edge. The C clamp or screw clamp is for holding down metal and wood and wood projects. It use scrap wood to prevent marks when holding down wood. Caution, make sure that you use scrap wood against jaws to prevent damage to your project. The carpenter's wood clamp has parallel jaws. It's used to hold down wood tightly or to glue wood face to face. Electrical. So this is a standard electrical extension cord and you can notice that there are some safety features. So use extension cords only when necessary and only on a temporary basis. You will only use extension cords such as this one with an instructor's permission. Do not remove the prongs of an electrical cord in order to plug into an outlet. Wire strippers. They're tools that, that anyone can use to remove the insulation surrounding a wire in order to plug it into a terminal or splice loose wires together. The multimeter is used to test the electrical output of outlets or other electrical devices. Wrenches. So the adjustable crescent is a tool which can be used to loosen or tighten a nut or bolt. A combination wrench is a wrench with an open end and a open socket end. A ratchet wrench is an essential tool that is used to fasten or loosen nuts and bolts. You can notice that they come in different size drivers. Sockets are tools used to tighten mechanical fasteners. They fit over the head of the fastener to provide torque. Typically, sockets have a hexagonal hole at one end that's designed to fit over a hex head bolt or screw. They come in both US standard and metric sizes. The deep sockets are used when standard socket wrenches wouldn't reach, such as automotive parts or engines. The socket extension is a device that allows a socket wrench to reach into a hard to access place. The Allen wrench or hex keys is a small handheld tool that's used for driving bolts and screws with a hexagonal socket. Safety rules for wrenches. Do not use wrenches that are bent, cracked, or have loose handles. Select the correct size jaw to avoid slippage or stripping of bolts. Do not use a cheater bar. Cleaning. Standard push broom used in the construction lab. Here's the hand brush that you're going to use to clean the benches and tools. Make sure that you put it back where you found it when you are complete with your cleaning project. Here's the dust pans that we're going to be using to clean up any type of sawdust or other scrap wood that is in the construction lab. Miscellaneous. So paint scraper, we use paint scrapers to, to scrap, scrape off excess glue or spread soft materials such as carpenter's putty. And then the pry bar, it's used to pry apart lumber or remove nails. This concludes our introduction to hand tools. 
If you have questions, please get with your instructor at the end of this lesson.